Hey guys, Coach P. Today I'm going to talk to you about old school bodybuilding contest prep. How we did it back in the day and what's changed right after this. Hey guys, welcome back to Championship Muscle. Old school bodybuilding contest prep. What was it like back in the day? The golden era, my generation of the 80s. What was it like? To put it bluntly, very, 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 very different than it is by today's standards. And I'm gonna tell you why. 40 years ago, we didn't have all the diet stuff you have today. Um, the diets were very simple. You ate egg whites and vegetables, chicken and fish and turkey, very low complex carbs. Um, you ate a certain amount of protein based on your body weight. By today's standards, these guys are taking in twice the amount of protein that we took in back in the day. They're kind of growing into their uh, physiques and what's, what's the change? What, why is that happening? Because of the drugs that are involved in the sport today. And I've been very transparent in the past. I've done my cycles back in the day. I competed at the universe and a lot of big shows back in the day. And like I said, I've had my fair share of cycles. But that was just a small tool to help you maintain the muscle mass that you built in the off season. We ate moderate amounts of protein, a lot of vegetables, and moderate, small to moderate amounts of complex carbohydrates. Because when you trained and, and if you're holding some body fat from the off season, taking in that moderate amount of complex carbs allowed your body to burn fat while you were training in the gym. For myself speaking, I might have had six meals a day. My last meal might have been, let's say eight o'clock at night. I didn't have anything else to eat until about eight o'clock the next morning. So I had like a 12 hour fast, which worked very well in the fat burning mode. My protein back then might have been 200 grams of protein, an unlimited amount of vegetables because it takes more calories to burn the vegetables than there are actually in the vegetables. And my fats back then were avocado type things um, cashews. I ate a little bit of oatmeal, a little bit of cream of wheat, not too much. Um, I was a baked potato guy, a uh, brown rice guy, not so much a white rice guy. But by today's standards, the things I've just explained to you wouldn't hold up to what, what the guys of today are doing because of the amount of drugs that they're using, the cutting up drugs, the clenbuterols, the insulin, the growth, and all the other crazy shit that these people are on. The body is requiring so much more food, complex carbs, sugars, especially to support the insulin, the high amounts of insulin that are being used, the IGF-1s and all that other crazy shit that's out there. So they're consuming enormous amounts of food. Back in the day, you didn't have a guy that was five foot seven, 300 pounds. You do now. You had a guy five foot seven, he might have weighed 200 pounds. That was huge. And if you were a six foot guy, you might have weighed, I'd say maybe, a, you know, the average weight was probably 225, 235, unless, if, if you ever heard of Jim Quinn, Jim Quinn was a freak back in the day. Jimmy Quinn was probably a 255, 265 guy back then. But Jimmy also had crazy genetics. My top weight back in the day was probably two and a quarter, 227, 228. Very symmetrical, carved out of stone type physique. Today, a six foot guy, 200, 225 pounds, he's competing in classic bodybuilding. He'd never, he'd never survive in the men's open. Because if you're in the men's open now, at six, I'm six foot two and three quarters. I'd have to weigh 285, maybe 290, just to be looked at. And, and be able to stand on that stage because of the amount of drugs that these guys are using to be able to carry the amount of muscle that they're carrying. It's a friggin' death sentence. 
The guys weren't dying back in the day. The old school contest preparation diets were simple, very simple. Today, if you don't have your complex carbs and your sugars and everything exactly where they're supposed to be, your blood sugar is going to drop because of the heavy amounts of insulin these guys are using. And if your blood sugar drops and you go hypo, if you don't have a can of Coke with you or something very sweet, you're going to die. It's that simple. I'm not going to sugarcoat this shit. Back in the day, I never used insulin back in the day. I might have dabbled with a little bit of growth hormone back in the day when it first came out. But when I tell you minimal three IUs a day, today these guys are using freaking 30 IUs a day. See the difference? Three IUs, I can stay on a normal diet. The growth helped with a little bit of fat burning, helped you maintain muscle. Now the guys that are using this 30 IUs on top of 30 or 40 IUs of insulin, you've got to feed that. Because if you don't feed that, and I've only mentioned a couple of drugs, what about the steroids? What about the blood builders that these guys are using? If you don't feed that monster, that monster is going to attack you and you can really suffer the consequences. I know a few people personally that have died from those protocols. And it's very sad because dead is forever. Guys back in my generation weren't dying. The guys back in my generation also had that hard, grainy, chiseled out of stone look following old school protocols, clean eating, very low to moderate complex carb intake, good healthy fats, a good amount of protein, not the overloading of food that these athletes or these bodybuilders are doing today. So if you're somebody who's considering wanting to compete in men's open bodybuilding at a national, international, professional level, really think twice because the amount of money that you're going to spend on the drugs to get you there not to mention the amount of money it's going to cost you to feed that monster to win what? A $15 bowling trophy? Really, is it worth it? Absolutely not. That's my rant for today. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me. Please like, subscribe, and share. My channel is growing at a very high rate. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for following me. I am a product rep for Gene Pro Protein. It is a veteran-owned company and it has been a game changer for me. It is probably the best protein powder supplement that I have used in 40 years. It is made for kidney patients and kidney failure, by uh, bariatric patients that have had the stomach, the stomach reduction for, for really severe overweight people, and it doesn't affect my blood sugar. That is the biggest important thing because I'm a type 2 diabetic. I also have my book out on um, on Amazon, Untold Secrets of Bodybuilding. Get yourself a copy, it's getting five star reviews. I put 40 years of things that everyone wanted to say in the gym, but never had the balls to say it. I said it, and it's doing really well. So um, if you would get yourself a copy, I appreciate it. So I just want to say thank you for tuning into my channel. It was greatly appreciated. Again, please like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, you guys have a great workout, and I'll see you in the gym later. Peace out.